Hey, what's up guys? This is Cameron uh, here with a review of the 2020 Trek Marlin 6. This is a 300 plus mile review now, I believe, and just wanted to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on this bike and kind of what I think it's best used for and a couple of recommended upgrades that I think you should get for your Trek should you want to be, you know, upgrading so here's the bike right here i'm out here at the uh you know, beautiful city of austin 2020 trek marlin 6 and the blue um so kind of like my overall experience with the bike um let me start with my rider profile i am about 6162 somewhere in there um and this is the extra large version you can see there's a sticker still on there and I think it's a pretty good bike for beginners honestly I started riding back in late March and this bike has treated me well as I've tried to you know get into mountain biking learn the ropes learn the fundamentals and I think it's a good bike to have honestly uh, as a beginner it is still definitely way above my skill uh, cap about four months riding now here in you know, July, so it's March. Um, I guess we won't count March since I got it in very late March, so May, June, July. So we're going into August. This is the 30th, and I think it's really good still. Got a lot to learn. Um, so the upgrades that I have, let's just get to that. So it actually comes with Bond Trigger tires, but I just got through installing these uh, Maxxis Minion DHFs on the front, the XO casing, and then I've got the Aggressor uh, by Maxxis, the XO casing in the back. Uh, the reason why I chose to go with the Aggressor and not the DHR is the um, pretty much the geography of the region that I'm in. Uh, Austin, Texas, a lot of the landscape here is very dusty hard rock um, a lot of the city is actually built on a bed of limestone that causes a lot of the trails to get pretty dusty and pretty rocky pretty hard pretty rugged there's a lot of rock gardens and stuff out here um, so uh, the first upgrade or i guess the second upgrade the first upgrade is definitely these tires you should get maxis tires uh, dhf and dhrs are pretty much the uh you know, bread and butter for a lot of people. I would just recommend those for really any mountain bike. And the second upgrade here is the water bottle cage. You know, for obvious reasons, gotta stay hydrated. I'm gonna take a drink after this video. I'm pretty thirsty right now myself. And the, the third upgrade here is this uh, Sea Guide Eco Chain uh, Guide. This is really good. What it helps to do is it keeps the bike a little quiet from this bottom chain um, busting up and down. And I got a little bike fluid, a little chain lube on my finger there. It's all black, but um, it uh, keeps the chain from you know slinging around everywhere. It keeps the bike a little bit quieter and prevents the chain also from kind of falling off when you're riding. You're taking those kind of harder hits. Keeps the chain in line and prevents it from failing. Um, I had a lot of chain, uh, I, I used to lose the chain a lot whenever I did more aggressive stuff before I got the chain guide. Since I got the chain guide, I haven't really had a problem with the chain. So definitely would recommend for a beginner level mountain bikes that may not have a chain adjustability. Um, and I guess the fourth upgrade here is this, instead of putting a second water bottle here, I've chosen to get this, uh, it's kind of like a pocket air pump by Specialized. I'll take it off here. It's, it's pretty nice. Um, I actually didn't end up getting this. My girlfriend got a, you know, one of those kind of Walmart $120 bikes and she went to the bike shop to get an air pump. They recommended that she get this and uh, actually kind of stole it from her. She doesn't ever use it. I use it now. Uh, it's got a little tube right here that extends out and you just twist this and it comes apart right here and just pump it up and you can use that if you're running low on you know 
air in your tires and it clips back in right here, very secure. Just pops right into place like that. And then there's a little kind of rubber band thing that adds a little another layer of protection there. So and yeah, that's about it. The grips are pretty nice too. Um, this is actually, you know, a lot of people kind of don't like these grips. They kind of like those two grips, but this uh, kind of flat surface here has really helped with my posture and also keeping my, you know, weight back on the centered on the seat post so I can, you know, find my center of gravity on the bike and it has allowed me to kind of train to ride without handlebars before I learn how to ride without handlebars. I can do it now, but just resting my hands on that helped keep my back straight and um, helped me with a couple of posture things. Um, only other thing that I would recommend is probably change the pedals. These are pretty bad and they're pretty busted up now, but I just use Vans and they stick pretty well. Um, I haven't any problems with any, you know, pedal slip hasn't busted up my shins yet but you know pretty sure that'll happen it's bound to happen i'm sure <laughs> so but yeah that's really about it uh trek marlin 6 2020 great beginner bike would i recommend it would i get it again yeah i actually would um i actually didn't buy this bike uh it was a birthday gift from my father but i would buy it again it's a or i would get it um it's a nice bike I would recommend it to a lot of other people that are just now starting out as well. So those are my kind of thoughts and opinions and what I think you should upgrade on it and how it's treated me you know, over these past three months. And I guess we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy.